Welcome everyone to this section of the course that focuses on the Gemini vision model and how to work with multimodal inputs, including images. Beyond the text model that we've already worked with, there is a Gemini Pro Vision version of the model, and that actually allows for multimodal input, where you can pass in a list of text along with a corresponding image. We can actually ask for a description of an image, or ask the model to use the image along for text for context to a query. It should be noted, however, that the vision model has about half the allowed max output tokens, roughly about 4,000, as the text model. That is, the text model that we were previously working with had about 8,100 allowable output tokens. The Gemini vision model is a lot smaller because it has to take into account the fact that you're passing in or potentially passing in an image, which is gonna take up more of that context space. It should also be noted that when using the vision model, you should try to optimize for use cases for a single input and output generation. It is not optimized for multi-turn chat. With that being said, let's head over and use the vision model with the Python API. Okay, here I am inside the Jupyter Notebook. Before we begin, I did wanna point out underneath the vision and images folder from the first lecture download in the course, we have a fridge picture.jpg file. I'll be using this file. Um, it's kind of large here. We'll show it in Jupyter in just a second. It's a picture of a fridge and we're gonna be using that with the vision model. You can play around with really any image you have locally. You'll just need to pass in the file path to that image. So let's explore this. And keep in mind to display the image, you may need to install the pillow library. You can install it by saying pip install and then pillow for capital P. This is the Python imaging library. If you're in the notebook, you can just run it with an exclamation mark. And then once it's done installing, you'll just hit kernel, restart kernel, and then it should be good to go. I already have it installed. So what I'm gonna do is set up my Gemini vision model. I'm going to import google.generative.ai as gen AI, and then I will say gen AI configure, and I'll pass in my API key, which I've already defined before I started filming this. And remember, you can just pass in your string there or call it as an environment variable. And then we'll say model is equal to gen AI dot generative model. And we're gonna pass in this time Gemini dash pro dash vision. So this allows it to be a multimodal model and first, I want to show you what happens if you just pass in an image by itself with no other context. So the image I'm going to pass in is that fridge picture. I'll show you how you can actually display it inside of a notebook. I can say import pil.image. Image is equal to pil.image open. In fact, I don't even need to uh, import image. I can just say import pil. And then we'll say fridge picture, and then I'll show the image. All right, so here's the image. There's a bunch of stuff in this fridge. Looks like there's some tortellini here, eggs, lots and lots of uh, fruits and vegetables, some salad dressing here, and let's figure out what happens if I just pass in the image to Gemini Pro Vision. So if you just pass in an image with no other context, then it's basically going to default to a description of the image. So we'll say response is equal to model.generate content. I'll pass in the image and then we'll say response.text. So notice how I'm passing in the image file. So even if you didn't want to display the image inside your notebook, you should still be using the Python imaging library to open up that image and then set it as the image object. Keep in mind, if you're getting an error here, you need to pass in the full file path to this. So what I mean by that is you may need to say something like C forward slash, you know, users, et cetera, et cetera, downloads to wherever your file happens to be located. So let's check out the response.txt. And so it says the photo shows the contents of a refrigerator, you know, including fruits and vegetables, dairy products, meats. I think there is some meat down there. I can see some, uh, I think it looks like a chicken. Um, foods arranged in a way makes it easy to see and access. Refrigerator is clean and organized. So again, by default, if you pass in just an image, it's going to describe the image. 
Now, what's really cool about Gemini Pro Vision model is the fact that you can combine that image as context for some text. If you've ever played around with Google Bard, you can actually do the same thing. You can upload a picture and then ask questions about that picture or use it as context for a query. And as I mentioned at the start of this lecture, this is really optimized for kind of a one-shot query with an image and then you get a single response back. It's not really optimized for multi-turn chat. It will sometimes forget the image. So we won't be showing that uh, here. Instead, we'll just be using the generate content, which is the best way to work with the image model. That is the Gemini Pro Vision. So how does this work? We simply say response is equal to, and I'm gonna break this up into a text prompt. So I'll say my text prompt is create a recipe based on the food items available in this picture of the fridge. And good prompt engineering when you're working with a vision multimodal model is to reference the fact that you're talking about the picture or image that you're passing along. What I don't wanna have the vision model do is just make up a recipe without looking at the picture. You could technically provide the image and then say, ignore this image and give me you know, a poetry about Claude Shannon. Um, but really we want to use prompt engineering to associate both the text prompt and the image in a way that the model understands that the image is context for the text prompt. So here's my text prompt, create a recipe based on the food items available in this picture of the fridge. Now I just need to upload that image along with this. So the way this works is I say model.generate content and then I'm gonna remember pass in contents here. Typically I would just you know pass in the prompt, but what I'm gonna do is pass in a list where I'm gonna first pass in the text prompt and then I'm gonna pass in the image. And we'll go ahead and run that. You should expect this model to take a little more time than just the text generation model because it does need to embed and understand what's going on in the image. But once it's done, we should be able to have the response text and let's print this out. And it says, here's a recipe for a salad that can be made. So it gives me the recipe for the salad, that's looking good, and then it gives me instructions. All right, that's really the basics of using the Gemini Pro Vision. The two things to keep in mind is how to read in the image and how to pass it along with a text prompt. So again, you can use the Python imaging library, so pip install pillow, and then you're gonna use PIL image open and you'll open up the full file path to that image. Then you'll have that image object. So just to inform you of what type this is. So if I were to let's get a new cell here, the type of this object is this JPEG image file from the Python imaging library. That's good enough to either generate content from just the image, in which case it'll give you a description of the image, or you can pass it along with a text prompt with a list. So contents is a list, text prompt, and the image, and then you can get the response.txt. So let me show you one more example here. I'm going to copy this. And let's imagine that I have a webcam pointed to this refrigerator. Maybe I have it inside and it you know, takes a photo every you know, 60 seconds. And I may be at the grocery store and I've set up a little simple API that helps me figure out um, what I have in the fridge and what I don't have in the fridge. So what I can do is say something like edit my text prompt, ask it, um, maybe I'm, I can't remember if I have tomatoes in my fridge or not. So I can say, do I have tomatoes in this picture of my fridge? Question mark. And then I'll print out the response.txt. So maybe I've set up you know, a really fancy API and I'm using Gemini AI models. And remember, if I take a look at my image here, there are definitely tomatoes in this fridge. So I scroll down and give it a little bit of extra time there. And there it is. So yes, there are tomatoes on the middle shelf of the fridge towards the right. Um, I would say, you know, depending on how you actually uh, take a look at this fridge, that could be incorrect or correct. I believe it's referring to this batch of tomatoes here in the middle towards the right, not over here on this left. So that is maybe a little confusing that there's two batches of tomatoes. This is also kind of a interesting picture of a fridge. I'm not sure people would just you know lay sandwiches like this and just raw lettuce in the 
a fridge like that, but you know, teach their own. But hopefully you get the idea that there's a lot of really cool applications here that with just a little bit of maybe computer vision engineering or adding in images from other sources, you can combine this with the idea that now you can pass in images, ask questions about images, use them as context, etc. All of just really a few lines of code here. Okay, that's it for the Gemini vision model. Um, can't wait to see what you build with it. Coming up in the next section, we're going to talk about retrieval augmented generation. I'll see you there.